Matthew chapter 28. Jesus, who was crucified, he is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples the word of the Lord is blessed. You may be seated. For a few moments on today, I want to encourage you from the subject. Preach, Mary. Preach, Mary. Today, in the midst of life circumstances, we have come here to commemorate and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This day of celebration, my brothers and my sisters, gives our lives purpose. It brings hope to our daily existence and provides meaning for our lives. And it also gives us focus as we strive to endure for the gospel's sake. For us, my brothers and my sisters, the resurrection is a symbol of hope. And it's a symbol of victory in a life full of difficulties, pain, and disappointment. I want you to understand, as the songwriter says, there's victory in Jesus. Yes. Come on. Come on. My Savior forever. Yes. Right. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Uh -huh. He loved me ere I knew him. Yes. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath his cleansing flood. Isn't it good to know, my brothers and my sisters, because of the resurrection, Jesus has plunged us into victory. There's a lot that we are dealing with in these lives that we live. But due to the resurrection, Jesus plunges us into victory. Danger, distraction, and disappointment seem like they will never cease. But due to the resurrection, Jesus plunges us into victory. When defeat, my brothers and my sisters, seems like it has the upper hand due to the resurrection. Jesus plunges us into victory. 
when we feel like we cannot see a glimpse of light in the midst of life's darkness. We can rejoice on today that because of the resurrection, Jesus plunges us into victory. HMBC, I want us all to understand the resurrection ushers in a new hope in a world where hope seems to be snatched from us on a daily basis. Have you ever been there? My God, my God. The profound impact of the resurrection embodies hope itself. That's right. This effect of hope remains steadfast, Brother Woodard, despite the challenges we face and the darkness that may surround us. But brothers and my sisters, due to the resurrection, we find comfort in knowing that we have the victory even in the midst of our struggles in our times of sorrow and when we find ourselves disappointed. What unites us with Christ both today and every day is the shared experience of struggle because Jesus endured hostility, frustration, and disappointment, just like we do on our time here on earth. Each of us, in some form or another, have encountered mistreatment. We've been misunderstood and carried the weight of adversity. We all have experienced hardship symbolized by striving to carry the bloodstained banner and at some point in various ways we've all faced some sort of persecution yeah. we've dealt with persecution my brothers and my sisters even in the church Hallelujah. but we understand that the resurrection serves as a beacon of hope in the midst of darkness. And it reminds us that our trials, Minister Ricketts, are only temporary. And our victory has been assured. The resurrection signifies a new beginning, a fresh chapter of hope and redemption for all that believe. My brothers and my sisters, by anchoring ourselves in the enduring promise of the resurrection, we find the strength to persevere through life's challenges, knowing that our struggles, our heartache, our pain are not in vain. As we journey through the ups and the downs of life, <coughs> let us take comfort in the fact that the resurrection offers us a renewed sense of purpose. It is a powerful symbol, my brothers and my sisters, of transformation and renewal inviting us to embrace a future filled with limitless possibilities and the promise that we will be triumphant because he lives we can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because HMBC we know who holds the future and life is worth living simply because our Savior, he lives. In our text, 
the female followers of Jesus. Yes, yes. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Right. Sister Patty, they went to visit. I see you, Sister Sue. <laughs> they went to visit the tomb or the grave right. of Jesus. Brother Ronnie, the reason, the primary reason that they went to the tomb was to anoint Jesus' body with spices. Not only did they want to anoint Jesus' body with spices, they were there to pay their respects. When we pay our respects, it's respect to those who have transitioned from labor to reward when we visit their resting place. Amen. We go to honor and remember them. They went to honor and remember Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. We understand that when we go to visit the grave of a loved one. Uh -huh. This allows us moments of reflection and it gives us an opportunity to show the love and the respect we hold for those who have gone on to be with the Lord. Yes. Yes. Not only did they go to honor and remember Jesus, you know that we find comfort and emotional healing and a feeling of being connected to the lost when we visit. Some of us, when we go, we see closure. And visiting the grave gives us a moment to process our grief. Sometimes, Mother Wright, we express our emotions and we strive to work through our feelings of sadness because we have been disconnected from our loved ones. For some, visiting the grave is a way to maintain a connection with those who are no longer with us. But as these followers, Reverend Slater, Jesus arrive at the tomb, the Bible states suddenly, an angel of the Lord came from the heavens. And as he came from the heavens, there was an earthquake. The angel went to the tomb and rolled away the stone from the entrance. And he sat on top of the stone. Tell your neighbor he was just chilling. <laughs> when the angel for my Bible studiers rolled away the stone he broke the Roman seal which had been placed on Jesus' tomb are y'all with me I want you to understand Sister Regina that the penalty for breaking the Roman seal was crucifixion upside down. So nobody wanted to be crucified upside down. But after removing the stone, the angel sat on top of the stone, just chilling. But he was shining and bright. And his clothes were as white as snow. It's critical. Top time, I want it's critical to understand 
that Mary and Mary Magdalene were not the only witnesses. There was a platoon uh -huh. at the grave site. Uh -huh. And the platoon witnessed the events. Understand that the platoon of the kill was placed there by Pontius Pilate mm -hmm. to ensure that the disciples didn't steal the body. Right. So we do, let me throw this in parenthetically, Sister Rosemary, because I know you want to know this. Um, due to the fact that the platoon was there and the disciples were scared, we knew that the disciples weren't going to show up at the tomb. But the soldiers, the, 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 these tough fellows, the best of the best of that day, they were so scared, Jason, that they froze. You know how it is. You see something going on, but you want to move? <laughs> This brother that came out the sky. <laughs> Moved the stone. Broke the seal. Up there chilling. Come on now. But they were paralyzed. But we have to understand. That there were also some consequences for them for this happened. Either they were going to endure critical punishment or they were going to die. Mm. Brother Roman soldiers stood frozen. The angel of the Lord reassured the women. He said, there's no need for you all to be afraid. He informed them that Jesus, whom they were looking for, had risen from the dead as predicted. Mm. I'm not the angel invited them to come see. Remember what the angel said. He has already risen. It's worth noting. Despite the women, I want you to understand this. Witnessing the angel descending from the heavens Removing the stone, breaking the seal. But guess what? No one emerged from the tomb like Lazarus came forth. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Because Jesus had already risen from the dead. Yes, yes, yes. The validation. Of Jesus' resurrection uh -huh. came as the women confirmed Jesus' absence in the tomb after everything they witnessed. Yeah. And I'm almost done. Ridiculous Simpson, the angel gave the women the task of informing the disciples about what they had seen and about what they had heard. Uh -huh. All right. I'm going to say it one more time. Because some folks in 2021 don't understand what I'm saying. The angel uh -huh. gave instructions to the women uh -huh. Tell your neighbor, say he gave instruction to the women. Tell your other neighbor in case they didn't hear you. 
He gave instruction to the women. Their task, their task, their task was to go preach. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Their task given to the women was to go and preach. It's right, it's right in the text. When you preach, Reverend Slater, confirm this with me now. When we preach, we tell the story. So he told them, Sister Rosemary, to go tell it. They were to go and proclaim the news that Jesus had risen. Amen. It's not over yet. She was to the, they were to direct them to go to Galilee, known as the land of the shadow of death. It brings us back full circle. In the land of Galilee, the land of the shadow of death, would experience a great light. So they were to go into Galilee to experience the great light. My brothers and my sisters, they were afraid. Sister so ministry can be challenging and frightening. But they were afraid. But MIT Belchers, in their afraidness, the women were filled with joy. Somebody say joy. When you tell the story, you got to be filled with joy. And not only were they filled with joy, they were filled with urgency as they set out to preach the message that Jesus Christ had risen from the grave. Tell your neighbor she preached. Tell your other neighbor she preached. So what can we learn from the first sermon after Jesus' resurrection? Number one, in times when we are broken and in times when we are seeking closure because of the resurrection, we are encouraged to be courageous and triumphant. Amen. Point number two. When we are detached and afraid, we are reminded to seek him and knowing that we will find him when and where he reveals himself. Point number three. When we least expect it, in the midst of uncertainty, we are assured and reassured that if we obediently seek him, he will reveal himself to us. The songwriter says, I serve a risen Savior. Yes. He's in the world today. Uh -huh. I know that he is living. Oh, yeah. Whatever yeah. men may say, oh, yeah. I see his hand a mercy. Yeah. I hear his voice of cheer. Of cheer. In just the time I need him. Always near. 
Jesus is always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus. He lives today. My brothers and my sisters, he walks with me. And he talks with me. Along life's narrow way. He lives. And my brothers and my sisters, because he lives, we must tell the story. And we must live the story. But go and do it quickly. We must do our best to live in the light of the resurrection. Go and do it quickly. Let us do our best to have love and compassion for one another. Go and do it quickly. We must learn to dwell together in unity. Go and do it quickly. We must strive to align our actions with the message of the resurrection. Go and do it quickly. We must show love and compassion towards one another. Go and do it quickly. As we work, we work in a spirit of excellence. Go and do it quickly. The songwriter says, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came in to my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came in to my heart. See, when we meet him in our personal Galilee, we worship him for who he is. In the midst of the problematic, we worship him for who he is. When we are grieving and when we are struggling, we continue to worship him for who he is. When we need closure in times of misfortune, when we need a fresh start, we worship him for who he is. When we find ourselves destitute and impoverished, when we find ruin and reproach in our neighborhoods, when we don't understand the darkness that surrounds us, we continue to worship him for who he is. Jesus, he's the son of the living God. He's our redeemer, the son of the living God. He makes a way out of no way. The son of the living God, our strong and unmovable tower, the son of the living God. He's a heart fixer, a mind regulator. He's the doctor in the sick room, a lawyer in the courtroom. The son of the living God is our calm in the midst of the storm. The son of the living God, our song of joy, our symphony of sweet peace, the son of the living God, the one true prophetic fulfillment, the son of the living God, our manifestation of what perfect peace looks like, the son of the living God, our example of love, our example of grace, our example of peace, the son of the living God, the good teacher, Rabboni, the most high, the son of the living God, our one true redeemer. See the songwriter says, when everything else fails, we can go to the rock. When trouble surrounds us, we can go to the rock. See, my God promised that he would keep me if I abide in his holy word. When everything else fails, because of the resurrection, I can go, I can go, I can go, we can go to the rock. Amen. 
So what we learn from this first sermon after Jesus' resurrection in times when we are broken and seeking closure because of the resurrection we are encouraged to be courageous and triumphant. Number two, when we are detached and afraid, we are reminded to seek him, knowing we will find him when and where he reveals himself. Number three, but last but not least, when we least expect it, in the midst of our uncertainty, we are assured and reassured that if we obediently seek him, he will reveal himself to us because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because we know HMBC, he holds the future. And life is worth living simply because he lived. The resurrection revealed. Preach Mary. God bless you.